So I uh, went to aluminum extrusions, and that was my first failure. I've had 17 failures of the 54 startups in 11 countries. Of the 17 failures, that cost me $55 million, which, of course, I did not have. But I was making money. I was making money in one company and financing another startup. <coughs> so that was the first. But I had a minority stake. I failed and started. The biggest mistake I made in producing aluminum extrusions in Holland for the rest of the market in Europe was you need tools to make the extrusion. And you need them in two weeks. Every time. I was importing them from Detroit and Toronto. And then when I lost the aluminum outfit, this Australian came and said, Bert, uh, let's make tools, aluminum extrusion tools. So here I'm showing you graphically how I got into all kinds of industries. From aluminum extrusions, I went to do the tool business. That only cost 150000 That cost a million. And then we, that is one of my eight children, five of which are entrepreneurs. One of my sons, who is now a big Catcom here uh, in Silicon Valley, and we imported tools, and then we started to make ourselves tools, and we went to the tooling not only for aluminum, but also for plastic bottles and plastic pipe. Of course, that was over the years. In 1966, it was 1963, before you were born. 1966, I had a fire, a spark erosion machine built by the Swiss, Burned down my whole factory, but totally. Wednesday night, I f drove uh, 200 kilometers an hour to the factory, still saw the glow, and it was totally gone. Thursday, we rented extra space. Friday, the insurance company came to me and said, you heard over the radio, you were burned down, and we haven't insured you. When will you start again? I said, well, maybe Monday. Maybe I produce crap. Maybe it takes me two months. The machines have to arrive. The people have to be trained. The orders have to be. Can we settle for three months on Friday? Saturday, eight milling machines came. Sunday, two spark erosion machines came by plane. Monday, I was back in business. Do you know what that does to your ego? <clears throat> well, I went back to America to thank the guys for shipping the machines. I said, what else do you do with the sparking? Well, we drill holes in jet engine blades. And that's the first time I hired a student, uh, Carol Janurtzai. I've hired 650 students in my life. Carol Janurtzai from Delft. I said, can you find out how many holes are drilled in jet engine blades across the world? Well, you only have to go to Siemens, Rolls-Royce, General Electric, Credit Whitney, so five customers. The order position are two or three years long. So you can figure out how many holes have to be drilled. I went to an American company, bought their know-how for 100,000 guilders, $50,000, and set up a spark erosion company, which since 1972 till now went from 100,000 to 30 million, has made money all these years except for two. So then, again, I hired, oh, by the way, Carol Janurtz, I found out how many holes, became head of Amsterdam Airport, later on became head of the Dutch Railways. So I've always, the CEO of Nike has worked for me when he was 19, and some wonderful St. Gallen students. And then we looked at the turbine industry. It's a $70 billion industry. with an enormous detailed supply chain. And every time we looked at the different applications and opportunities, every summer we did competitive analysis so I set up a company for machining in Holland. I set up a company for coating in uh, Dallas, Texas, honeycomb in uh, Indianapolis. This is a funny one. We make honeycomb for aircraft, for jet fighters. But then Procter & Gamble came to us. We need that honeycomb to make pampers. So we now produce honeycomb for all the pamper factories in the world. And, of course, not just for Procter & Gamble. We went to the competitors. That's a separate company where we have made in, in Boston. 